Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier with Wi-Fi speeds over a gig. It's more than enough speed to power all your devices. Introducing gig Wi-Fi, new from Xfinity. Go online, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Time for the NCAA Big Dance 2017 betting preview. Some news and notes from me, Joe Duffy, CEO of OffshoreInsiders.com. Don't forget, throughout the tournament, Joe Duffy's picks. Your Lord of the Big Dance, a.k.a. Mr. March, been winning publicly since 1988 and in the NCAA tournament since 1989. The winning is handicapper in terms of units won all time in the uh, NCAA tournament. Get my plays at OffshoreInsiders.com. Now, just some stuff from a spread betting standpoint. Uh, this is a moderate surprise because, as a lot of you folks know, uh, our regression to the mean wins in every single solitary sport, especially in the regular season. And usually the team with a much worse spread record is a pretty good play. But when we're talking about the NCAA tournament and you get to the uh, postseason and you're talking about quality teams, so it's not a big mismatch. Uh, the teams with the end, usually the bigger mismatches because you got a power conference school against one of those little schools that got a automatic uh, qualifier. So it's a little bit different than the dynamics that we have during the regular season. But the long and short of it is that teams with the bread, better spread margins are generally the better bet in the NCAA tournament. And that's probably what the public usually thinks. And usually what the public usually thinks is, is going to be uh, wrong. But in this case, better spread teams are generally good bets in the NCAA tournament. But Bad row teams are about a 55% spread play and 57% when they are posted as favorites. And again, that gets back to the golden rule we've been telling you about literally since the 1980s. That got to use the dictionary as a handicapping tool. A neutral game is neither a road game nor a home game. So a lot of people who handicapped, they went up outsmarting themselves, and they like to go with the team that is the better road team. And the odds makers are a step ahead of you, and really the odds makers have the better power ratings where they're not going to overplay a team's road record. And uh, therefore, the squares really uh, overanalyze a team's road record and underanalyze and underway a team's home record. So bad road team straight up, that is, are a pretty solid bet in the NCAA tournament. Although, strangely enough, when two absolutely horrific teams with away winning percentages uh, meet, the team with the slightly, slightly better record is a good play. But uh, yeah, you have teams like you know, Florida State and Duke. They've been very weak on the road and therefore will likely enter the tournament a little bit underrated. Now, great teams with superior home winning percentages tend to be good plays, again, because that is ignored more than it should be because people think that a neutral game is a road game. But remember, a road game means that one team is playing on the other team's home court. So therefore, the underrated teams, teams that are very good at home, but might be a little bit overlooked when people uh, overanalyze the splits, Virginia Commonwealth and uh, Virginia, Gonzaga, Nevada, Cincinnati, SMU. Remember, guys, the guard-oriented myth Teams, they're just there's a lot more guard play, and you want to look at the teams that are upset in the first and second round, and the the third round they're usually guard oriented. Well, tell me this: Washington has the best guard in the country in Markel Fultz, and they're nine and twenty-two straight up. Teams that actually are balanced, but especially have a nice inside play, are the better bets. Now, Villanova, they're to say the least. They're kind of an interesting team. They do return 9 of 11, led by Josh Hart and Chris Jenkins from last year's national championship team. But remember, this time last year, Villanova was considered to be one of those teams that annually makes a quick fizzle. Jay Wright went from being one of the best go-against in March to, of course, being a national champion. But, and, and I don't know, just think that Villanova probably returns to a form and they could be an early exit this year. Iowa State, another one of those teams, a little bit too guard-oriented for me. They're not balanced enough. I think they're vulnerable to an upset. Kansas, another team very much vulnerable in the paint. Remember, TCU took advantage of that. And they are 9-3 in games decided by five or fewer points. What that means is 
that they have a downside. Their record is not quite as good as a straight-up record indicates, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but teams that win a lot of close games are generally teams that benefited from luck. Teams that lose a lot of close games have been hurt by bad luck. So the fact that Kansas has been so good in close games means, look, they could easily have a worse record. Teams that could make a deep run uh, based on two theories, that first of all, teams that can win a game inside, and also teams that are young uh, usually have the biggest upside, where the veteran teams, they might start out quickly, but their upside isn't quite as big as the season goes along. With Florida State with Jonathan Isaac, freshman star, big man. Uh, Caleb Swanigan, of course, for Purdue is a beast down low. Baylor with Jonathan Motley. Wisconsin with Ethan Happ, and he's averaging 13.9 points per game for a slow-paced team. Arizona with La Lori Markkinen. Uh, these are guys that I think could certainly be strong contenders for the national championship. And, uh, you know, Arizona, I know a lot of people have picked them, but some of the uh, better dark horses to win and make a deep run. Teams that are built for a deep run, and we years ago wrote an article, we used some research done by the Bracket Science guy, where he confirmed what we said all along. The teams that really have balanced scoring, especially that can score inside, are the ones that are usually going to make deep runs. Now, the luck factor. Again, teams that are lucky have the bigger downside. And this is from Ken Palm of KenPalm.com. Ken Pomeroy is outstanding. Essentially, the luck factor is based on teams that have won a lot of close games. They could easily have more losses. Teams that have lost a lot of close games could easily have more wins. And I've said time and time again that straight-up record is the most deceptive part of handicapping spreads. So therefore, using the luck factor alone, again, it's not something we blindly bet, but using the luck factor alone, some of the more overvalued teams could be Texas Southern, the second luckiest out of 351 Division I teams, UC Davis 4th, Arkansas 7th, Northern Kentucky 13th, USC 20th. Again, they are the teams that based on the luck factor, could be a bit overvalued. Now, who could be undervalued based on the luck factor? Uh, Marquette, 313th luckiest team. Uh, Oklahoma State was 309. Virginia, 298. Florida, 292. Uh, West Virginia, 290. So those teams could very easily have more wins, and they would be undervalued. Uh, strength of schedule, just some interesting notes. Obviously, it's going to be relative to the conference they play in, but Oklahoma State, toughest strength of schedule in the entire country. And, of course, Gonzaga, another one of those teams that are always going to be debated when you have a mid-major, a, a non-power conference team that's a one or, or two seed. Uh, people are always going to debate that. Gonzaga, though, did play only the 129th toughest schedule in the country. And using Ken Palm, some of the seeds that are off according to his power rating, Wichita State, he has as the 8th best team in the country, yet they are a 10th seed. St. Mary's, he has the 14th best team in the country, but they are a 7th seed. Now, obviously, Ken Palm, his power ratings clearly there are favoring some of the mid-majors and aren't weighing the strength of schedule quite as heavily as some would. Uh, West Virginia, a 5th seed, but fifth in the power ratings. And look, I I'm pretty open. I use the knowledge of other people as far as breaking down the personnel matchups. That's not my strength, but I know where to get information from people who do. But there are some people who I really respect. You know, in my case, I like to compile a lot of computer systems and mix it with the knowledge of others. I take my strengths and the strengths of others I trust. But there are a lot of people who, who watch basketball religiously who believe that West Virginia, and I'm talking about people whose opinions I trust and have proven to know the game from a handicapping standpoint when it comes to matchups, they believe that West Virginia is actually one of the better teams in the country and wouldn't be surprised if they are a, a team that could certainly win it all or go to the Final Four. And Ken Palm's power ratings do say that they are very much underseated. But you want the winning picks? OffshoreInsiders.com. Plus, remember, even before I was on the score phones, heck, I wasn't, I was just starting high school when the lock line started on the old score phones 976. Well, they're now exclusively to OffshoreInsiders.com, the biggest place and the biggest sports services in their highest rated sports at OffshoreInsiders.com from the master lock line. 
Want to keep little hands busy at home? The Home Depot has free kids workshop kits with everything you need to get started. Pick up a new one in store starting the first Saturday of every month. Then head to homedepot.com slash kids for a project guide that's easy to follow along with, plus loads of other kid-friendly content. Kids can't wait to get their hands on them. Find out more at homedepot.com slash kids. Free kids workshop kits only from the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Plus, plus, last, U.S. only.